5th of July 2006 and I'm here at Dee's house and we've been talking about how stressful uh, writing Movers and Shakers was but um, just like childbirth we've decided to go again, have a ready. Yeah. Movers and Shakers was quite um, a big effort and it was something that we did in our spare time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a little bit of time up our sleeves. So we're going to go again, aren't we? Yes, yes, definitely. And there's a lot, thousands of women out there that have yet to be honoured by any recognition. Mm. And we thought we'd have uh, Movers and Shakers of Sydney. Yes, Movers and Shakers of Sydney, yes, that's right. Now what's your definition of a mover and a shaker? Well, somebody who has an idea and um, follows it up. I think that's one of the one definition of a mover and sh shaker. <laughs> that's your cute little dog. What's your dog's name? Um, Mia. I think it could be a bit like talking of dogs, like a Chihuahua, that. Um, that that gets the um, gets hold of an idea and then just shakes it until it actually gets it into fruition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think too the definition of a mover and shaker is um, they're doers. They're not sitters. Yes. Uh, when we did the book last time, we advertised through the mayoral column. Yes. This time we're advertising through various networks. Yes, that's right. And we're inviting people. You can put yourself in if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll leave that one. <laughs> so if anyone would like to nominate someone... How do they go about that then, Jan, nominations? Are we going to put them on? Yeah, we'll put the con I'll put the contact details on the end of the program. Yeah, oh, that's good. Mm. Okay, now we're going to go and have a look at the life of Edna Ryan. So this was... That'll be exciting. Yeah, because Edna yeah. was on the cover of our book, wasn't yeah, she? Yes, she was. Yeah. Hang on, I'll get a book. We were, we were actually a bit cross, weren't we? Because we, we got hold of the bulletin. It had a hundred influential Australians. Yes, but so few of them were women. I just couldn't believe it. Yeah, because it creates the impression that women sit around all day doing nothing. Exactly. <laughs> we all know that's not true. So Dee, can you read us what we've written about Edna Ryan? Yes, Edna Ryan was 1904 to 1997. Edna Ryan became a legend in her own time. Edna Ryan had a life of extraordinary activism on behalf of the working class, working particularly with women. Even well into her 70s, Edna focused her energies on the Municipal Employers Union where she carried out many campaigns with her major focus on working women and the ongoing struggle to achieve equality in the workplace. Her research submissions and lobbying were a critical landmark for equal pay decision that came through the Commonwealth Arbitration Commission in 1974. The Edna Ryan Memorial Award was established by the MEU and the ESU and will continue with that award. The Women's Electoral Lobby also presents the annual Edna Awards they have since 1998, honouring the contributions by feminists throughout New South Wales. That's what we actually wrote in the book and the reference was uh, the MEU newsletter Equal Pay at that time. Okay. Do we have um, a deadline for this book? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How long is a piece of string? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could aim for uh, International Women's Day 2007. Yes, that would be a nice idea. Okay, so over the next three months, if we start taking submissions, yes, and people can email their stories, yes, and um, we don't have we only have about twenty copies of 
movers and shakers in the Leichhardt municipality. But they can, I think there's about 20. So if anyone would like to buy a copy, mm -hmm. uh, the details are on the end of the program as well. Oh, great. Okay. So we're itching to go to work again, aren't we? Yes, that's right. <laughs>
And he wasn't a very good thief either because uh, he butchered the cow and left the hide under his bed so that the owner of the cow could identify it and tell the police. He was, as I say, came out here for 10 years, but after two years in Van Diemen's Land, he got a ticket of leave and uh, that was 1852 and 1853 he got a conditional pardon and of course the gold rush has started and John Cronin vanished from the face of the earth. His daughter Hannah, because he left a wife and five children in Cork, she came out under a, an assisted scheme, colonial settlement scheme in 1856 and Hannah was Edna's grandmother. She had a very unhappy search for her father and no luck whatever and she went to the gold fields where she met uh, Johann Struck, but later known as Joseph, uh, a German man, a very kind man, and they became good friends on the gold fields. Joseph, of course, was involved with Eureka. He ostensibly lost an earlobe there, and uh, uh, Julia Lindell and Margaret and I were just been down to Eureka. We looked for this uh, earlobe, but had no luck. <laughs> And, uh, nor the offending musket ball, but uh, uh, we found other things. We found Joseph Strook's name in the, in the register down there as having been there. Uh, they got married in Melbourne and came back here to live. And Joe worked on the Sydney ferries, all in Piermont here. They had ten children. Uh, and his mother was number six. And her uncles were quite notorious around these parts. Uh, but, uh, John, the eldest of them, was a stonemason who built that bridge, or part of that bridge, over at uh, the Piermont Bridge. As you go across it and see that fine stonemason's work, that's uh, great uncle John's part of his handiwork. He also tipped a fellow over who was a scab in 1891. <laughs> uh, but uh, from there, uh, and his mother had 12 children, as you see, 11 of them up there. Number 11 uh, died in infancy, but uh, so there were 11 survivors. And the six girls that went first really helped Edna sort of shape her life because they worked harder than men but could never get a man's wage. Her mother, getting very little support from her husband, of course, had to go and clean offices in King Street, walk across that bridge every morning in the middle of the night and clean and come home about seven for a pittance, which again upset Edna. She went to school here until high school, then they moved to Woolloomooloo, the Cathedral Street, and she went to Ford Street High. By the time she was 16, all her elder sisters had gone off and been married, uh, no longer contributing, of course, to the house here. And Edna decided at 16 to put herself in the workforce. And here she is, very unhappy with... So you're going to the book lodge? That's right. I've moved and shaken my way here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll follow you in. Okay. Okay. Hi, Dee. Hi. Hi, Jen. Hi, my name is Ben and I'm a reporter from the Village Voice newspaper. Um, I've been sent out here today to interview the two ladies that have written this book. Um, 
Now, my editor gave me the assignment this morning and she didn't tell me that it was International Women's Day and I really think we should have sent a female reporter because if you look around here you'll probably see that there's about 60 or 50 to 60 women and um, I'm at this stage the only man in the room. So I really think we should have sent a female reporter. Yeah. We've got um, Maybank Anderson, Lottie Lyle and Edna Orion. Photographs of each three ladies on the cover. All very pink and girly. Like a, a shrine to all the movers and shakers that have gone before. Well, as somebody who uh, was born and bred in Micah, and had a very, very small uh, contribution to the book. I'm very impressed. I think it's a wonderful book and it's a wonderful idea. And I'm sure there are even more women out there who deserve to be in it. And if you add it up, all the hours that the women in this room, the volunteer hours that the women in this room had put in, you could probably run the country. <laughs> My name is Jenny Templin and I'm part of this uh, Movers and Shakers uh, publication and I have to say I'm honoured to be included. Thank you very much. Like childbirth. If you do what you're in for, you would have started. <laughs> 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 you know, start. That's true. I know. And see, we've we only got the books a week ago, and already, oh, a week ago, we, were, we thought of another book as an hour. It's the same as childbirth. After a while, you think, oh, I wasn't that big. <laughs> But it was actually a very wonderful exercise in cooperative, a cooperative female creative endeavour. And it was very difficult. If we'd had known from the beginning how huge it was going to be, would you have done it? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. So we, we did it without an argument or a crossword. We were just beautiful, weren't we? She's not Between um, you know me being in hospital and Jan being in a wedding and like all these things just had to impinge in there on everything. So. I know. And the thing that I learned is what amazing things women do in the spare time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Spare time. Which actually means that you don't have any spare time left for yourself. But at the same time, all the people in the book are movers and shakers. It's a passion. It's a drive. It's people who see things that need doing and they think to themselves, well, if I don't do it, it won't get done. So I better do it. So we, we thought we'd better go and do the book. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we, um, the book was a very, very interesting process in learning about the enculturation of the female. We had trouble because we got the nominations through the mayoral column and we had nominations go out through different community networks and when someone was nominated we'd ring them up, or you rang them up, and a lot of times people would say, Oh, no, I haven't done anything. I don't deserve to be in the book. And then we had to argue and say, but you did this and you did this and you did this and I think, well, no, we think you should go in the book. And then they go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the thing, we are not trained to promote ourselves. We are not trained to blow our own trumpets. It's quite rude and quite unladylike. So we did cross over that barrier, didn't we? 
Well, we did, but you wouldn't be in the book. <laughs> I wanted to put you in the book because of running Swan, the Sydney yeah. Women's Art Network, for all those years. She didn't want to go in the book. Why don't you show yourself the Parliament House over oh. <laughs> example, she said, you go in the book. And I go, no, no, no. I don't want to go in the book. You go in the book. And she go, I don't want to go in the book. I can't go in the book. <laughs> so we had a big argument and uh, we decided at the end we would take a bit of artistic licence and just put a few sentences about ourselves at the back of the book. Because yeah. we didn't want to be known ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> really like, I'd really like to uh, just have a minute to think about what we thought. We thought that if women women have a very low profile historically and I was very shocked when I went looking for some information on women, I could find nothing. So we thought, well this is one way of lifting the profile and being making sure that we have positive role models for our girls coming up because it's hard for them if they just see a whole lot of bearded blokes all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and then they go and research. So we're hoping that by doing this we can also acknowledge what women, that what women have done in the community, which is so important, and lift the the profile of women in the community and also perhaps uh, some young ones might see what it was like prior to the technolo technological revolution that we're all in at the moment. Like Rini here, she's in the book and she was talking about when people went to the war along the now the light rail line there at the back of Annandale, they'd throw out all the letters and people would post them because there wasn't any email and there wasn't any mobile phone. So, like, for young people, they probably can't get it all. So we're hoping that maybe... <laughs> It will just, just show people maybe, oh, is that what happened? Gee, is that what went on before the mobile phone and the email?